But Zai does, though. He's, okay, he gets level 1 Sandstorm, at least, and it's not a value point at level 1. It's actually pretty terrible at level 1, so he'll be leveling yep. that up. Okay. He's doing all right, though. The one good thing about this is he gets experience when Axe shoves the creeps into the tower like that. Of course, Axe gets a lot of farm, but Lee Sand King gets something. And Zai actually last hitting very well. He's 6 and 0. Meanwhile, down bottom, KYXY getting harassed by Arteezy, but Mushi's already rotated down, and this is now a safe lane try to make sure KYXY gets all the space that he needs. Yeah, but the bottle already on Kuro's Whisk means Arteezy and Kuro have a lot of sustain in this lane. The big thing for Malaysia is to not let this Whisk get any bottom runes here, because that's he's not going to make the big trek towards top. Force him to bottle Crow, if anything, and just keep control over this bottom rune, which looks like they will do so at least for the two-minute mark. Yeah, Mushi grabs the bounty rune. Yeah, it looks like Ketchik Imba will make a run towards that top rune as his bottle gets delivered. Lena versus Zeus. Magic damage mid matchup here. Should be fairly even at least until level 6 comes out when the, the, <laughs> the burst damage gets a little insane. Yeah, one of the matchups Lena doesn't really dominate as much as some of the other heroes like yeah. Queen of Pain or even like a Storm Spirit to a lesser extent. I reckon it should be a fairly even farm fest until we see rotations come into the lane. Yep. And it is so far. Uh, Axe and Tiny both farming on point with one another. The really nice thing for Malaysia is this Axe can just solo versus a dual lane here. This Lich Sand King lane doesn't put that much pressure on him. Sand King doesn't have mana until the bottle comes out. Lich is, has to be very careful because Ohio has Tranquil Boots. So if he gets cl really close to Puppy, we could see problems arise. So what do you make of the Lich pick here in this game? We don't see him too often. Notorious for his lane control, getting that uh, extra XP going the way of your team. Does this feel like a, a good Lich game to you, Parker? Uh-oh. Wow. Double damage on Ketchik Gimba. Finds a first blood in the mid lane. All right. So not just a farm fest mid lane. Turns <laughs> out Ketchik Gimba has some tricks up his sleeve. That's the second time this series he's solo killed S4 mid lane. My. Yeah, double, double damage rune will do that oh, with that. The current TP doesn't get a kill in the height. That, that TP up top is designed to get a kill there and try and punish some over aggression. Yeah. So nice play by a higher to back out, out of there as soon as he sees the TP in. Waste the Wiz time, because Tiny's not getting any farm. As soon as Wiz TP's top, Arteezy has to ditch bottom lane and start running top, because he cannot stay bottom without the Wisp there. Yeah, and he's only on brown boots right now, so he's going to have to dog it all the way up there. Sand King, he'll get some space to work in the jungle, though. They can get some stacks going on. He'll be able to find some recovery farm and even hesitate to call recovery farm. His CS score is about even with the Tiny right now. A lot of wasted time for Arteezy. Uh, Kuro stuck on an empty bottle, but yeah. not for long. Yeah, and the good news is Sand King's a natural hero just to transition into the jungle, so this can open up the top lane for Tiny. You can completely abandon the off lane, which means Jug's going to free farm away, but at this point, you farm your safe lane, you farm your mid, you farm your jungle. For Secret, this is a this is a reasonable setup. It's just they're kind of playing from behind from the get-go because of how good a start Ohio had. And guess what? That start's getting even better. He's going to get a solo kill against three heroes up top. Maybe be able to get out of here as well, it looks like. Arteezy has a toss. Avalanche not needed. Okay, they punish him. I think still pretty good for the Axe. That gets him very close to level 6. Gets him a little bit of extra reliable gold, and he's already got his Tranquil Boots. Yep. He could have a Blink Dagger coming out at a very good timing. He's just wondering where was Mushi, because Mushi actually already TP'd up there. Mid lane, you can see a TP in. Puppy just going to refill S4's bottle. Support life, I guess, when you're a Lich. Yeah. Sand King closing in on level 6 also. Uh, same as KYXY. Here on the Juggernaut. He did pick up the early phase boots, pretty standard stuff on the Jug. We'll probably see that Mask of Madness, Yasha build, tried and true on this patch. Opens up so many possibilities, moving to the jungle to farm, Roche possibilities, all that good stuff. Yeah. Malaysia so far going against the trends of 6.83, but they'll mix in a few things here or there, like the Juggernaut, but this is still, I mean, you get, get to see some funky things out of the Omni Knight pick. And even going back to the Axe, which is not as popular here outside of a few teams, maybe like Ninjas in Pajamas who are still running a lot of it. Yeah, we'll see a little skirmish break out up top as Ohio doesn't use the Berserker's call. It's only level one. Kuro tethers across there, misses on Arteezy. But if this dance around both sides is minimal blood is drawn. That was with a Zoot ulti flying out, so Malaysia could have been in a bit of trouble there. It seemed they wanted to time that Zeus ulti and maybe with some aggression coming out from Secret, but Arteezy didn't go for the combo. Six minute rune coming up, and Kuro's going to be careful. He's got no boots here. The tether escape is really all he's got to fall back on. Omni with no points in D gen aura, though, so yeah, a little bit safer than otherwise. There will be a battle for the bottom rune. S4, he could be in some trouble here. KYXY had detection in level six. It could have been a kill, so all right, he's safe. Zeus closing in on level 7. Yep. 
not too bad. Dying to Solidolina, of course, hurts, but still recoverable here for uh, S4. Phase Boots also come out onto the Lina, so now Ketchikimba does have a little bit of catch potential, lots of movement speed, and those right clicks with that first point and Fiery Soul actually do add up quite a bit. Yeah. I, I prefer the treads on the Lina. I think you have enough movement speed just with the one in Fiery Souls, but I think it's a personal preference there. Top lane of high gets initiated on Avalanche Toss combo. Yeah, he's already used the Frost Blast, and we will have another toss in two seconds. So Hyre probably just wants to go for a suicide. No, we went in for the kill and didn't find it. Meanwhile, mid lane, Lina with a Laguna Blade. It's a one-for-one -one trade onto a Zeus. That's a favorable trade mid lane for Malaysia, but across the board yeah. is a secret with a two-for-one victory. Zeus brings out the Omni, or uh, Zeus finishes off the Omni Knight, then it will cost him his life. So at least S4 gets some experience before he dies. Ketchuk Imba getting that snowball rolling. Lena already with a fair bit of gold to her name. Probably going to rush that Yule Scepter. No big surprise there, but these are the kind of games where Lena really shines as a core. When she gets these early kills, this bit of momentum, and looking at net worth, she's number one by a good margin, about 30% up on the next highest farmers. And the big thing is for Malaysia, they're still contesting this offlane. So yeah, Ohio dies there and gives up a bit of golden farm, but he's still getting good XP. He's got 32 CS. He's 900 gold. Safe lane for Malaysia has been completely abandoned. KYXY is free farm. He's about to get the T1 tower. There's a rotation now from Zai, but this looks to be too late. And against the Lion, it's really hard to just sit, go in Sandstorm and, well, try and prevent the push from happening. Lion, Johnny going to move forward. Doesn't hit the Impale, but forces Zai back and should secure this bottom T1 tower with the Glyph on cooldown. Yeah, without the Glyph, exactly right. This gets very difficult. And you see they just bully him out of the way and easy last hit for KYXY. Very nicely done there. Up to about 1,600 gold. So things looking okay for Team Malaysia. Ohio still getting a lot out of this oh, offlane. Top lane. Lina going to miss the stun here. That was a rotation from Ketchikimba. Knew they deep watered the lane, but got to hit that LSA if we're going to get that kill. Yeah. Oh, Kuro. He could be in some trouble still. He's hasted up. Still lingering around. Avalanche on two. Heal from the Omni Knight. Out comes your Laguna onto RTZ. Puppy's there with a slow, but he's only level five. No Chain Frost available. Dragon Slave brings RTZ low, but the overcharge from Wisp is enough. Zai sidesteps the LSA, now connects with a stun onto Johnny, but he's all by his lonesome. Ohio goes over and just dunks Puppy. And now Zai, he's on the retreat. Avalanche onto Ohio. Zeus ulti flies through. A lot of low health heroes on Malaysia, but they just can't find these kills. Double kill for Ohio. Zai walks into him. Zeus. That mana drain, he's got no mana for a barrow strike now. Oh. KYXY comes in, cleans him up. And he's got an Omni Slash. Should Secret continue this fight, but Malaysia with a one for three, including kills on Tiny and Sand King. Very nicely done. That was just great positioning and just hiding from Malaysia. Everyone got so low from the AoE damage, they just kept pulling Secret further and further in. The Sand King's eye was making some all right plays in the front lines, but he didn't have the follow-up he needed. He was just pulled too far away from the rest of his team, and Arteezy didn't want to go back in. He was too low from the previous engagement, so. Well so played. Looking at Arteezy's farm, uh, Power Treads, probably into Drum of Endurance, has that Bracer up on about 1k gold. And uh, I reckon that Aghanim Scepter will be on the way. Nothing too creative about the build, but will allow him to power farm quite a bit. Zai, he stopped off for a bottle after his Tranquil Boots. So that will slow down that blink timing. Not really yeah. finding too much farm. Hasn't had that luxury of being able to just AFK in the jungle and farm up. He's been forced to come to these fights, contest tower pushes, and that's really hurt his bottom line. Yeah, he really needed the bottle for the lane stage. He actually got like as his first item pickup before he even got boots, I want to say, just to help him out in that 1v1 initially against the Axe. But yeah. as things stand, seems secret. Slightly on the back foot here, Lina. A lot of momentum. Ketchikimba looking for the LSA on Arteezy here. But kind of hard to find the initiation. Said they get the T1 tower. So again, Malaysia maybe not finding a kill off for this, but they've got complete control. They're the ones dictating the flow of this, this game right now. And, and KYXY getting the last hit on both of the towers they've killed. That secures his Mask of Madness and almost half of a Yasha already. Also, Axe getting his Blink Dagger off that. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, this is, this is a big. problem item as well. And you look at this goal graph. Malaysia with a very big lead for only 10 and a half minutes in. Yep. Mostly gold. Experience still relatively even. Wisp is also level 6. Now that Relocate is a threat, Maybe we'll see a little more efficiency with Tiny farming a side lane, and they can relocate in if a fight happens. It's a threat, but it's if it, it's a threat you see coming, at least you've, or you, with a warning sign attached to it. So you see it coming, yeah. you can prepare with a repel to block all of the Tiny's damage output on wherever the relocate's going. You've got the heals, you've generally got, you've got an Impale for an AoE stun, you've got an LSA, you've got multiple AoE stuns, you've got an Omni Slash, you could Blade Fury to dodge it. There's actually, I don't even see a Wisp Tiny relocate being that scary for Malaysia if 
they have like enough numbers. If it's a one, two hero ganking unit, then yeah, you probably not the best idea. But for the most part, I think this is a a, a Wiss tiny that isn't going to be looking for to be, or able to find that many kills off of the relocate. Yeah, at least not for a while. RTZ pulling up that gold. May opt to actually skip on the drums and just go straight into the Aghanim Scepter, keeping his options open for now. Yeah, every now and then you do see that tiny blink dagger. Eternal Envy especially likes to go for it, but... Here we go. Initiation onto S4. Ohio catches him with a Berserker's Call. Laguna Blade is there. It's an easy kill. Ultimate from the zoo, or from the uh, Lich comes out, but no bounces. Ohio will still get locked down. Compliments of the relocate. Now Johnny stunned up by Zai in very deep and pale only on one. Mushi's there to heal him up. Finger oh. almost finishes off Puppy. Now Omni Slash bounces around. Puppy will go down to the Lena and Secret. They had the fight, but now they're just getting cleaned up. Arteezy will get chased down by the Juggernaut. Now Zai out of mana has a couple of stick charges, but Blade Fury's there. Nowhere for him to go. And this should be yet another kill for KYXY, I believe. Oh, he's got the movement speed. No Pyro Strike mana. Good. Oh, Zai okay. jukes it. Nicely played. Okay. Still a two for three, favoring Team Malaysia. Yeah. Tiny gets relocated in, but ends up paying the price. You use a combo, you kill the Axe, but Axe has already kind of served his purpose. He killed off the Zeus to start the fight, and this puts Malaysia in a fantastic position. Yule Scepter is complete on Lina. Oh. 1,100 gold on top of that after the follow-up kills. Ketchik Imba in a fantastic position this game yeah. to This is a great take timing. Over. Gets, the, gets it even before the level two Laguna. Kill after kill with this item. Very powerful in the hands of a hero such as Ms. Inverse. Okay, nine to six. The gold lead kind of plateaued a little bit, but now Malaysia is starting to pick up some of the experience lead, and that's where they were not quite as far ahead. Johnny on the lion, kind of taking a page out of the Mushi book. 13 minutes, not much progression towards a Blink Dagger. That's one of the, I don't know if it's a concern for Malaysia, at least not yet, but both their supports are playing. Very defensive, neither is being allocated any farms or any lanes to even get experience at this point. It's hard to do so against a Wistiny because of the relocate threat, but you want to make sure at least one of these two supports gets something in the way of items, I feel. Otherwise, Secret will be able to be in a good position. They go for the Blink on Arteezy, that's a jump on your Lina. That's why you go for the Blink on Tiny. In some ways, it's a catch-up item because you can farm heroes. The Axe helps you catch up if you're farming stacks and, and jungle camps, but the Blink allows you to catch up in a much more aggressive and just omnipresent way. Yep. And Zai getting a lot of gold out of that kill, ending the big streak. Almost level 11 also. Now shows off that Blink Dagger. Ohio goes in with the Repel on. This is we'll find what he's looking for, but KYXY will gets dropped low by S4. He will try to Blade Fury away. Mushi has a heal in just one second, and it looks like KYXY will live. Arteezy now going in. Toss onto Johnny. Chain Frost may start bouncing around. There's some illusions here as Ohio hops into the fight. And finds a dunk on Lich. There you go. Now Zai. Burrow strike on two. But Johnny's there with a the hex. They've got a dust. They'll turn it around and the Sand King dies. I don't know how Malaysia do it, but somehow that fight went okay for them. Uh, that was I'm just watching this like, oh god, what, what, what's happening here? This jug's about to die. They just didn't get all the kind of chain, chain stuns they were hoping for, but somehow they made it work and Malaysia scraped their way through a decent exchange in the mid lane, but they've got to be careful. This Tiny with a Blink is a hero they now know is going to look to keep on ganking. You go, don't, don't go for this Blink just to get that one kill on the Lena. Exactly. You're looking for kill after kill, even if it's just support heroes. I mean, this becomes your farming tool at this point to get to your Aghanim. So if you're not finding hero kills, you're not farming nearly as efficient, efficiently as you could be if you had just invested that gold towards the Aghanims at the beginning. So a good start, but they need a little bit more. KYXY closing in on the Yasha, on the Juggernaut. His build looking uh, pretty well rounded here. Also level 11, so Omni Slash that much more potent. Okay. Also, one thing I was missing from the last couple clashes was that level 2 ulti. Now have it and ready to go. Uh, it's on cooldown for another minute or so, so we'll see if Malaysia look to maybe wait things out with that cooldown before going for another fight. The tier 1 tower mid is rather low. They may try to just slow siege it and see yep. what damage they can do, force a reaction out of secret. Healing Ward comes down, only level 1, but tower, chop, 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 there's the glyph. Meanwhile, oh, the bottom lane. lane, Kuro, yeah, gets initiated on into the dunk range, Ohio. Uses that Culling Blade and finds another one. Tier 1 tower in the mid lane will go down again, killed by the Juggernaut. KYXY, 3 for 3 with these tower kills. Zai with a beautiful Master stun on madness. 2, sets it up on the Jug, nicely done. Now Johnny, left behind, blink forward from Arteezy, will finish him off with a punch to the face. But now the rest of MY on their way in. Ohio has a blink up in 1, but no, it's Zai that reinitiates. S4 takes a Laguna, he won't survive. Again, it's a 2 for 2 around the map. Not ideal for Team Malaysia, but... No. 
They're getting kind of okay. greedy. I think they're getting overconfident at times as well with some of the play. Like going for that T1 tower on the jug with Blade Fury when there's a blink tiny and he went to like almost the full duration of Blade Fury before he killed the tower. So he had no good escape plan. Yeah. Other than the lion, who was meant to try to cover him with an impale, but Tiny just blinks past, catches him. Well, Sankin blinked and went in first with the bar strike, so. He also, and he, he knew he was in trouble. Like, he finished off the tower and was like, crap, my Blade Fury is about to die. He pops the Mask of Man, just purely from movement speed to try and escape. But then once he gets hit by the bar strike, 30% yeah. bonus damage, yeah, you're done for. I think it's the right play there. If he doesn't use the Mask of Madness, yeah. he's still going to get stunned up anyway, so. Definitely the right play, but not too many options. Once you there. get stunned up, he was so screwed. Yeah, KYXY didn't get that tower kill if it was denied. I think that fight really favors Secret a lot more as they are a bit behind, but three for three on tower last hits is making this jug so rich. Him and Lena both topping the charts, and Arteezy's catching up on that way to the Aghanim Scepter. Has the point booster now. Slow and steady. Yep. The nice thing for Secret, though, is they're really in no hurry. Uh, this Zeus, he can scale very nicely, as we've talked about, and Wisp Tiny, they're all about that late game. So as long as they can mitigate their losses for now, fine taking some casualties on their Tier 1 towers. I think late game's still for manageable for Malaysia. I, I, I can't really... I don't personally think either team has a clear advantage come late game. I think Secret's yeah. going to be in a slightly strategically more comfortable position because they can split push using the Wisp Tiny. Yeah. Malaysia going to have to stick together a lot more because of the relocate, not to mention the blink initiation of a Sand King. But at the same time, I mean, oh, bottom lane. Yep. KYXY taking a lot of damage here. We'll try to Blade Fury away. A stun oh, stops too. He'll live. Ultimate from Omni Knight to turn things around. Io and Tiny in the grave. Team Malaysia ready and waiting for that one. Zai may try to reinitiate here, but Repel is still on KYXY. Gets caught by the Burrow Strike, and he ends up going down on the backside. Zeus will fall those. The rest of Team Malaysia follow up. It looks like Zai will make it out. A one for three at the end of the day. Sure, they lose their jug, but. They get two high-priced targets in the Zeus and the Tiny. Man, these, these like, ravages coming out from Lion. That was just stellar as far as that Impale went. Perfectly timed. Jug could have even lived. Got a bit greedy there lingering around when there's this Blink Sanking, but even so, I think Team Malaysia going to be pretty happy with the overall outcome of that fight. And again, it's Tiny on, tiny going down. That's the third death for Arteezy. And just slowing down the Aghanims that much more. And it's not just about the gold that you lose, but time when you're stuck in the grave, not farming stacks. And stacks just don't seem to be something that Secret have right now. Looking around, and there's not much for this Tiny to retreat to, to kind of power farm his way up to that Aghanim. So even the Ancients, not stacked up. And from here, Malaysia, they're getting their kind of core levels. This is really where their lineup can shine. You've got Omni Knight at level 8, so pretty much maxed out Purification, Guardian Angel, almost got your Max Repel as well. Lena is issuing out serious damage output with level 12 in the, the Yule Scepter. Curious to see if this is going to be an ax, straight Axe after the Yules or even a BKB. Definitely a BKB game. It's just a matter of when and like what timing you want the BKB at. I think there is a lot of justification for getting it before the Axe Scepter this game, depending on who's going to be getting repelled. Right now he's 6 1 and 7, and you make a very good point about the repel. If he goes for the BKB early, that opens up. Uh, for the Axe, I think, to be the primary target, given that Jug has that uh, Blade Fury for a, a BKB-like effect. We'll see. Ketchik, uh, pretty pretty good with the early BKBs. You see some players that are a little more liberal with the usage, and they'll be down to that five-second charge by the time the mid-game rolls around, but you see Ketchik much more choosy about when he uses those BKBs, so I think he's maybe well-suited to go ahead and pick it up sooner rather than later. And BKB will cause secrets a lot of problems. A tiny, the only physical damage, and he's not dealing physical damage right now. Not probably for another... Five, ten minutes at least. Yeah. He is closing in on that Aghanim. It's only about a thousand gold away. Hasn't found too many kills with his Blink Dagger, but he'll go in on the KYXY down bottom. Hits him with the combo, but Blade Fury, yeah. Healing Ward, he'll be just fine. Just trying to force TPs, it looks like, because there was no follow up for the Wiz Tiny, and the Tiny combo alone was never going to be enough damage. Yeah. Team Malaysia, though, they don't overreact. They're just hanging out in their jungle for now. Four staff up on Zai, going for a lot of mobility items here. And Malaysia's still not giving that much farm allocation to their supports. Mushi starting to get a bit up to 30 CS, but it's Wisp, as far as the supports go, who actually has the most farm of anyone. Wow, he actually does have a lot of farm. Tranquil Boots, Bassy, Magic Wand Bottle. Pretty core kit for the Wisp. For 20 minutes, he's feeling pretty rich. So imagine Malaysia going to look to... Up the aggression once more, especially around the timing of these BKBs. A higher, just 100 gold away from his. Has the Ogre Club for some time, and Lena's next purchase coming soon. Be it the Ag Scepter or the BKB, he's only 1,000 gold away. 
Okay. Keeping his options open, at least. Both teams taking a slightly more passive toll as they just continue to farm up their core items. S4 hunting around for stray wards. And for secret, they haven't got any scary items that are going to cause Malaysia problems coming anytime soon. The Axe is coming sooner than the Tiny, but that to me is more a farming tool right now rather than a fighting tool. He hasn't got the attack speed or the follow-up item to actually fight around this. The Wisp Overcharge help, helps a bit, but it feels Malaysia are far enough ahead and have the heroes that can fight a Tiny with Axe Scepter until Tiny gets Axe with a BKB, with an AC as well, on top of the Axe Scepter. Team Malaysia will finish off the Tier 2 tower in the bottom lane again. KYXY getting the last hit. And that's going to prevent a blink in mid lane, but... Yep, and they save their Tier 1 tower. Okay. Big access point for the Radiant side to control Roshan. And they'll keep it standing. Things looking pretty good for Team Malaysia. Slow and steady as they continue to rise in net worth. Nothing insurmountable. Only about 5,000, 2,000 experience. Radiant's top tower is under attack. This is absolutely not looking too good for Seeker, though. You're... The Zeus at mid lane is dying quite a lot. Your Tiny's died a few too many times, and it really feels like this game's going to become all in on the Tiny. The team fight from the Sand King Zeus is just going to be negated heavily by the BKBs and the Repel, and now there's an Aegis on KYXY to go with that, so you can really just fight and siege at least all the outer towers. During this Aegis timing, I imagine we'll see both the Tier 2 mid and top both go down. Yeah, easy uncontested Roche for Team Malaysia. Jug just picked up his S and Y and already sitting on another 2,000 gold to look towards his next core item. And outside of the Tiny, the farm on Secret is certainly lackluster. You look at S4's inventory, nowhere near a Bloodstone. Dyer's Nothing on the Courier. Even the Sand King, I mean, he's got some mobility tools, but where's the damage coming from for the Dire side? If you don't get a good Epicenter and decent Chain Frost, your team fight power is just neutered. Yep. So Malaysia, just gonna five man around. They say repel KYXY, he just pops Mask of Madness, tanks up the tower. Nothing too much he's really afraid of at this point. May get hit by like a blink bio strike, but even then, he's got good backup in the form of the Omni Knight. Secret will let it fall for a tier one tower trade in the bottom lane. Wisp Tiny are tethered up. He could relocate back, but they won't pose any kind of a defense. Now five for five tower kills going the way of the Juggernaut. That's a scary thought. Yeah. Team Malaysia lingering around, and well, we're the thinking they go top, for, yeah. for Tier 2s, but they want Tier 3s. They're going high ground. Tiny Wisp still pushing in the bottom lane. Relocate is available. Nice Summer will help delay things a little bit here, but Jug just does a bit of damage, backs off, and I think at this point Malaysia may realize it's not the most effective trade. They want to defend bottom yeah. lane, but they actually aren't TPing. They're going to lose a Tier 2 off of this. Arteezy trying to wait hey. out the last hit. And oh. well, it goes to the Dire. That's unfortunate for All him. that waiting is just better off at auto-attacking, I think. <laughs> yep. Yeah, very awkward trade for Malaysia. They tickled the Tier 3 tower. Very minimal damage there. Certainly not worth it to trade two for one. With Secret this far behind, that is valuable income that they are yeah. happy to pick up. Only the Axe had TP, which was a big problem. And I think Secret had scouted out the lack of TPs and knew that, okay, Axe alone is not going to TP and punish us at bottom lane. Uh-oh, Zai channeling the ulti here. Who's he going to find? Not Ohio, but jumps onto Johnny. Doesn't quite have the damage. Ohio will BKB, catches him with the Berserker's Call, but Relocate is on the way. Tiny and Wisp joining the party. They bring down the Lion. And now Ohio caught without a BKB, will get comboed. The Branch doing huge damage. He will Berserker's Call for the extra bit of armor. It may be enough to live. Now KYXY TP's in the relocate out. Zai gets left behind, slam dunked by Ohio as he reinitiates. Puppy, now he's by himself. Chain Frost bouncing around the creeps. Ohio hoping for some RNG. And he'll find it. Heal from Omni Knight also keeping him topped off. But things turn bad for Secret once that relocate back. Takes Arteezy out of the fight. That was a nice play by KYX. By going for a Blade Fury there to dodge the Burrow Strike, when most people would just pop an Omni Slash or go chasing with a Mask of Madness, right click damage, but he manages to get the kill, well, help get the kill in the Sand King through that, and Secret just trying to find what else they can on the sides of the map here, but it's not going to be the easiest for this Wiz Tiny right now. Yeah, and they'll just have to go back to farming for now. Arteezy is farming very well, though. Now that he's got this Agonims, we've seen his net worth just steadily improve, and he's nipping the heels of that Jug only about a thousand gold away. Looks like Jug gearing up for the beginnings of a Scotty, ultimate orb number one. Still a long ways to go, but yep, it's all the rage. All the cool kids are doing it on this patch. Oh yeah, Kway X wants to fit in. Is under attack. Still a few minutes left on this, the Aegis, or a minute and a half. Zeus Ultimate going to scout out 
Well, some aggression coming out, and this looks like Tiny just going to TP himself home. The Yule Scepter will catch the Wisp, and Kuro not going anywhere. Easy kill there. Ketchik throwing out the Laguna Blade for good measure. And was it, it was an Aghanim Scepter in the end for Ketchik, so another 1,300 gold can work on either the Initiation Mobility item, like a Blink Dagger or a Shadow Blade, or go for the BKB now. Well, with a dead wisp, it looks like Team Malaysia will try to put some pressure on the mid lane. Still that Aegis of the Immortal inventory of KYXY for just a little bit longer, and they're going to try to make use of it. They also have an Omni Knight ultimate off cooldown, though he is light on mana right now. Has a Soul Ring coming up in about 10 seconds. Well, no split push to worry about this time around, but it's bottom and top lane in pretty good positions. You know the wisp is dead, so Tiny doesn't really want to go off on his own down the lane. Doesn't even have a TP scroll. Oh, toss they toss in KYXY, but Ohio follows up. Arteezy stunned up, taking a lot of damage here. No mana for an Omni Slash, though, importantly. And Tier 3 Tower goes down again. KYXY finding the last hit. Okay. Really, Team Malaysia pretty happy with that. They'll just back out instantly. Oh, with a Scotty, he's now got the Omni Slash mana. KYXY gets jumped, but he's going to Omni Slash and turn this one around. Arteezy almost dies, but stays alive for now. KYXY's Aegis is going to expire soon. and needs to be very careful about this timing. They get the slam dunk onto the Lich, making it a 5v4 on the field. Maybe the regen buff will actually help him out here. Yep, and they can reinitiate this. Oh my. Back to full HP and mana. No Omni Slash though, and everyone else very low on mana here. Johnny caught by the combo. Repel, quick reactions from Mushi as the ultimate from Zeus comes out. Now they'll try to turn onto Arteezy. The Tiny gets hexed up, he gets brought down. Whisper locates out. Epicenter from Zai, but it's just not enough damage. Force Staff for S4 to the high ground will keep him safe. Zai, he'll get force stabbed as well, and looks like I think they're, relo they're going to relook at Arteezy in the middle of this. Oh, buyback from Tiny. He misses the avalanche, but now has a toss out onto Mushi. He tanks it. KYXY has the repel on. He's going to go for S4. He's going to find another kill. KYXY oh, no. Tearing everybody apart with a Scotty SMY. And it's a wasted buyback on the Tiny. He buys back. Sure, he doesn't die, but he gets yep. nothing out of it. No kills, and now he can't farm. The slows from KOXY combined with the chase potential and the movement speed he's got. Max movement speed under the Mask of Madness is just too much to be dealt with. And yeah. Oh, this Tiny now just going to be kited around. He can't least... really survive the Omni Slash all too well. I guess if the Wisp is there with a Tether Overcharge, it can go okay. But this is going to be a level 3 Omni Slash, this upcoming fight. If it was level 3 Omni Slash in that last one, Tiny probably would have just died from the Omni Slash alone. Axe also pulling up a lot of gold. Oh, goes in mid, jumps onto Puppy, uses his BKB. Four staff will buy Puppy a little bit of space. Ohio not getting enough spins here and can't bring him into calling blade range. Okay. But a bit greedy, I think, or just... Yeah. Oh, that's an eight-second BKB charge, so minor yeah. victory for Secret. Yeah. He sees the Lich, he's like, Lich is alone, has no escape, but there's a Sand King right by with the four staff, so... Yeah. Good play from Secret, just get the ledge out and Max BKB goes down a little bit, but yeah. Exposed Rax in the mid lane. Potentially Malaysia can just wait for the next Roshan if they want to play things on the more cautious side. And they'll, they'll have a couple more big items coming up soon. They've managed to stockpile a decent amount of gold on all three of their core heroes, seeing on about 1500 plus gold. And there we go, Axe will spend some, picks up a full stuff. Okay. Well, Team Malaysia, they've breached the five figure lead in terms of net worth and team experience. And with that, Zeus ulti, this is normally, you see a Zeus ulti, that's a good time to go for a smoke if you want to, if you're Malaysia, but it looks like actually they're just going to say Zeus ulti on cooldown, let's just push down mid lane. Let's fight, baby, bring it on. This Jug is eager for some blood. 3, 2, and 7 right now. He needs, he needs a higher KDA. Invisibility. Some rotations coming out from Team Malaysia here. Plenty of pings on the minimap. Roshan, we'll see what that timer looks like coming up in just a couple seconds here. Yeah, certainly something that Team Malaysia will uh, want to focus on. Yeah, that's going to be... I don't know if Secret even have the heroes all oh, the time. Oh, walks right into the smoke rotation. He gets fingered, decapitated. Yep. Ohio uses his BKB, a little, little willy-nilly with that seven-second charge, but still an effective smoke rotation. And the good news for Secret is that Malaysia don't really have good scouting heroes, so they couldn't actually catch onto the Tiny, who was really close by. Even the Lich was right by them as well in the lane, so there was two more heroes who could have very easily been caught and picked off, but... The Lich wasn't visible, though. He had yeah. that 30-minute room. Oh, that's, that's true. He had the invis. So he was probably They safe, have a gem but... on the axe, but yeah, they, oh, didn't yeah quite, right. they didn't quite walk into him. Yep, fair enough. 
Wisp dead though, and as much as that's just like your, your support, this is a hero that the Tiny does somewhat rely on to be able to team fight. KYXY has a Javelin on the way. Possibly the beginnings of a Skull Basher as the Mantis Dog. It's picked up by the Tiny. There is a Glyph on the Dire side as their backs go under siege. Barracks, rather. There's the Glyph utilized. Repel on the Jug. He just wants to focus the range Barracks. Go for the sure damage. Does Blade Fury away. Great timing as Arteezy was looking to initiate and try and punish this aggression. We, once again, you saw what happened last time with the toss back into the tier 4 towers. If that happens when you haven't got a Repel or a Blade Fury and get pulled really far away from your team, could lead into a compromising position. Still good damage on this ranged barracks, though. It goes down. Now they'll start working on the melee. Siege Creep here to help out KYXY. He's doing a lot of damage here, and they just can't initiate when he's repelled. Yeah, they'll wait. Back off, wait for the next repel, and I think they're going back in on this. Yeah. They still have everything except the finger, and it's coming up right around the corner, about five seconds away. Here's the toss deep into the tier fours. Okay, nothing ever ever repel, yeah. so he just run, runs out. Has he's a healing ward as well. Oh, Chain Frost will bounce into the Creep Wave, unfortunate for Team Secret. Zeus ulti flies through also, minimal damage. They have another Repel and they may just keep going once more. They should, that's two ultis down. Why not go for a team fight now? Definitely got the right idea here in general on the Malaysia side. Next Creep Wave coming and looks like the plan is to look to finish off this mid melee Rax. S4 trying to spam out the wave as much as he can, but it's just not enough. Does this break the back door protection? It certainly does. KYXY, a lot of damage onto the barracks. Yule's on the Tiny. There's just no way to stop him through the repel. The power of the Omni Knight. As the mid lane of barracks is claimed from Slow Siege, now the toss back with Blade Fury on. Zai tries to stun him, but he can't. Now Ohio, Berserkers call on two with a BKB on. Laguna brings down the Tiny. GA comes out for good measure and a Culling Blade on the Lich. And that's a Tiny without buyback. He just purchased a Manta style using all his money and are they even swinging bottom lane? It looks like they may just go for the backdoor play. They haven't got creeps anywhere near bottom or top, but they say two's dead. Tiny's not buying back. Let's try and force it out. And creeps are in the base. Well, KYXY's got plenty of sustainability to try and tank this. Zai uses the epicenter, and it does next to nothing. Secret are out of ultimates now. This is a big, big problem with Tiny not buying back. I think Malaysia have caught on to the fact he doesn't have a buyback, and they're just going to focus down the racks. No, they four gets four. caught. Uh oh, relocate back to the well. Ooh. He lives for now, but the tier three tower has already gone down. Team Malaysia could be ready to upset Team Secret in this opening best of three. And that's a second melee barracks. This is going to be a double lane of racks. This is suddenly becoming kind of insurmountable for Team Secret at this point, even a Wisp Tiny. This early on, I don't know if they they can do it with this draft. Feels like Artor just doesn't have the farm right now. He's about even with the Lina, and the Jug is just out of control. They simply have no answer for these BKBs. You look at this draft on paper and think, well, once Tiny gets enough damage, he can just club them down through the magic immunity, but we're still so far away from that point. And this is a, a period of the game when Jug is just out of control. Well, Jug now, completed Skull Basher, Abyssal Blade, surely soon to follow. And with this, Malaysia have just bought time for the Roshan respawn, so we could be seeing them just secure Roshan and going for the GG push. They very well may. See how they want to react here. They did have to go back to regen up a little bit by their next round of items. They're, They're going like all in for these push items, like lying with the drums. It's not an item you see very often. <laughs> Something to give him an edge here and now. Uh-oh, Roche gets scouted out by KYXY. Uses the Blade Fury to go into the pit. Ultimate from Zeus comes out, but again, just does next to nothing. Now Arteezy stunned up by the LSA. They're all on the cliff. More staff onto the cliff. Oh, this could no. be a disaster. The toss down, but a finger. The Omni Slash, just too much damage for Secret to handle. Now Tiny, stuck in the grave, still without a buyback. At the very least, Team Malaysia will secure Roche. That's it. Puppy calls the GG. And Team Secret fall 1-2 to two against Team Malaysia. That is brutal. This may be a double elimination style on a bracket, but being in the lower bracket in round one, not to mention the team you versus